Hello everyone and welcome to the webinar. My name is Jennifer Adelstein and I am the Marketing Assistant for Industrial Controls. Today's webinar is Boiler Upgrades That Will Save Fuel and Energy on Industrial and Commercial Boilers from 50 Horsepower and Up. The presentation will take about 45 minutes and after we will take some time to answer your questions. During the presentation, feel free to enter your questions into the chat interface on the right hand side of your screen. We will also open it up to voice questions where we can where you can raise your, your hand, but this option is only for people with phone connections and not those using their computer microphones. Now we are going to hear from our panelists. Um, our first speaker is Bill Hoppler. Um, he has a BS degree in electrical engineering from Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey. He worked for 13 years as a sales engineer for Honeywell's Process Management Division and has worked for industrial controls for the last 14 years. Bill teaches customer seminars on flow technology, industrial wireless solutions, and gas detection. Um, our second speaker is Chuck Cuddy, and he has a business degree from Carroll University. Chuck has been with industrial controls for 10 years. Um, Chuck's primary focus has been to leverage new technology to help customers improve their energy and process efficiency. Our third speaker is Bob Thomas, and he is a Honeywell Combustion Control Specialist. Bob graduated college with a BS degree. After six years in the Army, he joined Honeywell in Memphis, Tennessee. From there, he traveled to LA and to Philadelphia, where he currently is based. He has been with Honeywell for 34 years. At this time, I will pass the presentation off to Bill. Thank you, Jen. Uh, I am in our New Jersey office, the Industrial Controls Office in New Jersey. Chuck is in Milwaukee, and Bob Thomas is, uh, and is with me in New Jersey. Uh, I think we've got a good subject here today. We had 110 people sign up. Uh, what does that tell you about uh, energy costs today? But before we go through with our seminar presentation, for those of you that know Industrial Controls and maybe those that don't, we do have 17 offices in 22 states. We've got a really nice uh, website. And after the webinar, you can go onto our website and see some of the documents that we talk about today. Previously this year, we've done a number of webinars on process instrumentation. We did one on pH. We did one on temperature. Uh, last month, we did one on industrial gas detection. Uh, we've got a whole range of control valves, some of which uh, fit nicely into the boiler application. But today, we're going to focus on combustion controls. And one of the nice line cards I like to show people when I go out for the first time, and Chuck, I think you probably like this too, is yep. a little line card that is specific to the solutions around boilers. So for years, we've been doing valves and gauges, instruments, flow meters, recorders, Flame safe, flame safe upgrade, uh, boiler blowdown valves, fuel valves, damper controls, etc. Um, but one of the things that Chuck and I and Bob have noticed uh, up until three or four years ago, which is when linkage list control systems came on the marketplace, every time we would go into a boiler house, we'd see the famous jack shaft. And those of you on the phone that are familiar with the jack shaft, you'll know what we talk about. Those are not, uh, it's a very important concept because it develops the reasoning behind the mechanics and why this linkage list control system can help pretty much anyone with a 50 horsepower boiler or more uh, save some pretty serious energy. And to the best of our knowledge, we think that 95% of existing boilers out there have jack shaft systems. And basically it's pretty simple. You've got a, a rod here that controls at the same time fuel air ratio for your gas valve and also for your combustion air. And that's what you depend upon in order to control the balance of your fuel air ratio in the chamber of your boiler. So that's what we see when, when Chuck and I go out and, and do application studies and startups. And what we finish up with and what we'll talk about today is a, a retrofit, and this is a Lever Brooks 300 horsepower boiler that we did. And now you'll see that all the linkages are gone. And we've replaced those with electronic actuators for both the, the fuel and for the air. And you're going to see in a few minutes how powerful that is in the ability to control your boiler 
at the ideal combustion rate at all loads. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Bob Thomas of Honeywell to uh, update us on the Honeywell fuel air ratio system, which was the first on the market to actually introduce a linkageless system. All right, thanks, Bill. Thanks a lot. Uh, what is linkageless fuel air ratio control or parallel positioning? What you see on the left is what we're more, more typically looking at today, which is the foot-mounted actuator driving both the fuel and the air, whereas on the right, those links and cams and single foot mounted actuator have been replaced by direct coupled actuators. And we'll see this slide again later. And the older type of technology was acceptable when energy costs were low and people weren't too worried about it. However, with the new type, the new type of technology really should be used, must be used when energy costs are high. And also it has a green effect of helping to protect the environment. So why use linkageless controls? As I mentioned, most boilers have mechanical linkage systems with one foot-mounted actuator positioning both combustion air and fuel at the same time. And you'll see in a later slide that this really just begs inefficiency. Whereas the linkageless system replaces that single actuator with separate direct coupled actuators for air, up to two fuels, and flue gas recirculation if required. Flue gas recirculation, however, can also be used as a fourth channel uh, actuator, and we'll see that in a later slide where it's on a Gordon Pyatt burner with a uh, secondary air sleeve. So what are the benefits of this? Closer and more precise firing rate control over the entire firing rate of the burner. Users improve 4 to 20 milliamp control operation of the old slide wire 135 ohm. Can incorporate low fire holds, prevent short cycling and boiler thermal shock, very important during startups of course and it's password protected. So once the curve has been set, as you'll see in a little bit, no unauthorized readjustment can take place. So increased turn down. Typically right now, mechanically linked systems use the same point for light off and low fire. However, many burners are capable of operating at a lower rate of fire than light off. So you typically see mechanically linked systems with an optimal, optimal turn down of three to one, and that can be increased up to six to one using control links. That prevents short cycling of the burner and reduces fuel consumption. One caveat, however, it's always important to check with the equipment manufacturer to make sure that their burner is capable of operating at this lower turndown rate. Yeah, hey, hey Bob, this is Chuck. I, I just want to emphasize that short cycling is, is a real energy saver, where if you can minimize and reduce the amount, of, the amount of times that boiler is turning on and off in a day, depending on your purge cycles, that can really save a lot of energy for, for, for the customers out there. And I believe you've got a slide that speaks to that later in the presentation, correct, Chuck? Okay. okay uh, going back to why you use linkage lists, maximization of burner efficiency, mechanically linked systems are typically only at their maximum efficiency at one point on the curve. And then you have to compromise efficiency to get reliable combustion through the curve. Control links can have 24 points on the curve, so you do maximize the efficiency throughout the curve. And we've got a slide later on that shows you the challenge of trying to match a mechanically linked system to a combustion curve, and then the difference in efficiency you'll see when you use direct coupled actuators. Yeah, um, for, for everybody out there that, that's uh, not familiar with what a curve is, essentially it's an X and a Y axis that plots out where your air and fuel is at, at, at any point on that X and Y axis from low fire in the bottom left hand up to high fire in, in the top right hand corner of that curve. And as I said before, control links does have a green component to it by reducing emission gas and also by using fluid gas recirculation. And that helps uh, reduce NOx emissions. And finally, for those of you who have dual fuel, Mechanically linked systems typically require readjustment of combustion air when, when switching fuels. This may or may not get accomplished. Time constraints also mean that efficiency is not achieved when setting up the burner with mechanically linked systems. With control links, however, you can set up two independent fuel curves, one for gas, one for oil. So when you throw the switch from gas to oil or vice versa, you're actually moving to that particular curve that's already been established. and you reduce commissioning time by 